everyone. Welcome to part three of this YouTube video. So in part one, I shared how I mixed up my colors. I don't know if you've seen that video yet, but in part one, I mixed up the colors and then I created some jelly papers using those colors and stencils from PM Artist. So these stencils were super. I really enjoyed using them. And then in video two, what I showed you is creating the background layer to this painting. So in today's video, I'll be adding the final layers and showing you different steps. I actually printed some papers onto some botanical elements, which I haven't filmed, but I will be doing an upcoming video um, showing how I print the botanical papers as well, because they're lovely to use as a final layer in the piece. So there's quite a lot going on in this painting. I've sanded back areas, I've added multiple layers of print. So I think you'll find it quite interesting and a way to uh, inspire you how to use your own jelly prints um, for finished paintings. Okay, so I hope you'll enjoy watching this and I'll, uh, so let's get started. So I'm going to start off by sanding back a bit more. So I'll put some music on because this is not very nice noise for you to listen to. I'll just do a little bit. So just normal sandpaper P60. I'm not sure what grade that is, but it's, it's not really rough. It's sort of in the middle, middle of the range, I would say. remember where I was going to place these. About here. Okay, so I'm just going to start off by putting some glue underneath. And then I'm going to Place it where I want it at the top. And I'm going to start at the top. And then I'm just going to work my way down, holding it up and pulling it towards me as I go. And that should stop it getting too wrinkly. So you can see what I mean by adding a glaze now. I'm just going to let that hang off the edges because I'll just file it off once it's dried. I'm just going to very carefully smooth that because it's so thin I don't want to rub it too hard so I'm going to do the same for this one okay so I'm going to let that dry then I'll take the edges off here. Okay, so I'm just going to assess that again now that that's dried. So I'm not so happy with this sort of edge here. I don't mind this one that is not working for me so what I might do is take my roller and go over this area with a sort of like a lighter bluey green more of this shade What 
I want to do is just pull up some of these areas. I'm going to use a colored pencil to do that. And sometimes when you try and do this on top of a paper, it's a bit too shiny, so you can add a layer of clear gesso, and that helps to give the pencil some tooth to grip onto. It seems to be working okay. Need to be careful if you're saturating areas like that because it can easily rip the paper underneath if it starts getting too wet. These little pops of colour just can make all the difference to a painting. Pull it all together. And again, I'm just working my way around, make sure there's... Your eyes moving around the piece. Now you can seal this painting with UV varnish or with um, cold wax is another way to seal the painting to give it an archival finish. So I've tried both methods, I like them both. The gloss medium is nice and easy. I usually put gloss medium on which seals everything and then once that's dry I then put UV varnish on top. You can also get satin which gives it a not as shiny finish. So just lots of different ways you can finish paintings that are like this.
Okay, so as always, I usually like to let it sit for a few days before I decide if that's the final layer. But I think I'm quite happy with it. Hope you've enjoyed following along and learning how to use your jelly prints in a finished painting. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. Bye for now.